Sylvia groans with frustration and pain, wishing she could join her family on their canoe trip. Instead, she's recovering from a broken wrist. Sylvia can't even console herself with a cool injury story. Her wrist didn't break during an exciting adventure. She just tripped over the kitchen rug. Now her doctor says she has osteoporosis, a condition that causes fragile bones. She's only 60 and at risk for more fractures. Between worrying about her children and her ageing parents, Sylvia never considered her bone health. Doesn't osteoporosis only affect old people? How did this happen? Could it have been avoided? When it comes to bone health, the question isn't whether you're at risk of breaking a bone, but rather how much risk. Fractures are much more common in later life, but having a high risk isn't limited by ethnicity, sex or even age. One in two women and one in five men over the age of 50 will break a bone because of low bone strength and are therefore at a much increased risk of breaking bones repeatedly and suffering loss of independence. Called the silent disease, you may not know your bones have lost strength until you break a bone. As a healthy woman in her early 60s, Sylvia assumed she wouldn't be affected, but if she'd considered what might weaken her bones, she'd have realised how high her risk actually was. She could have taken steps to strengthen her bones, and she can still lower her risk of future breaks. It's never too early to start strengthening your bones. The loss of bone leading to breaks happens over a lifetime. Your bone gets stronger during childhood and adolescence, reaching peak bone mass by your late twenties. As you age, your bones start losing strength. Your doctor can explain ways to slow this process and strengthen your bones at any age. Many people don't reach and keep peak bone mass because of foods they avoid, lack of exercise, other health conditions or medications. This can lead to their being more likely to develop fragile bones in later life. As a teenager, Sylvia worried about her weight. She often drank fizzy drinks instead of milk. She preferred chips over broccoli. Sylvia didn't realise what she ate made a difference but a few changes to her diet could have made her bones stronger. Calcium and all the other nutrients provided by balanced healthy eating are key to building strong bones. Plus, we all need vitamin D to help our bodies absorb calcium. Sylvia and her husband now plan family meals with this in mind. Her osteoporosis indicates their children have a higher risk of developing the condition. Growing strong bones and forming healthy habits now helps lower their risk. Building a career and caring for a family is exhausting. Most evenings after the kids were in bed, Sylvia collapsed in front of the TV, sometimes consuming three to four alcoholic drinks in an evening and smoking an occasional cigarette. If she could go back, she'd limit her drinking to one glass, stop smoking and go for a walk instead of zoning out on the couch. Bones become stronger when used. Sylvia wasn't interested in sports, but weight-bearing exercise like walking helps keep bones healthy and strong. Smoking and excessive alcohol consumption can damage bone cells, increasing the risk of weakened bones. Sylvia's dad, George, fell and broke his hip last year, and Sylvia worries he'll never be able to get back to all the activities he enjoyed. George blamed his broken hip on the icy front step. As Sylvia learns more about why bones break, she realises weak bones are really the underlying culprit. Once his hip healed, George insisted he felt fine and stopped taking his medication, but just because his fracture healed doesn't mean his bones are in better condition. Sylvia urges George to talk to his doctor about restarting his medication and learn a few simple exercises to improve his balance and muscle strength and lower his risk of another fall. It took a broken bone to teach Sylvia the importance of thinking about bone health. Making a few simple lifestyle changes might have spared her the expense, pain, days off work and limitations she's experiencing now. Besides, those same lifestyle changes would also improve her health in other areas.
But Sylvia's story isn't over. Her doctor assessed her bone strength to help determine her risk of more fractures. Now she's working with her doctor to reduce her risk through medication, diet, fall prevention and regular exercise. What is your risk for breaking a bone? What steps can you take to make your bones stronger? Visit National Osteoporosis Society to learn more. This video was kindly adapted for the UK from a film developed by the United States Bone and Joint Initiative and their Fit to a T public education programme. Visit nos.org.uk for more information on osteoporosis.